YouTube, good or bad, let's figure it out. Okay, Mark Bergen joining me. He wrote a book on it. He's a Bloomberg writer and he's the author of Like, Comment, and Subscribe about YouTube. Mark, how you doing, brother? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. All right. Kidding aside about good or bad, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your conclusions having done the research on YouTube about its upsides and its downsides. Yeah, I mean, I think that the main takeaway is it's just uh, it's an incredibly important and influential platform that has managed to really like slide under the radar for a long time. Um, I think someone described it as sort of this big iceberg and like a sleeping giant of social media. Uh, I mean, I think it's it's set really the tone for a lot of the ways that the future of of the media and industry went, and and that has had you know. The very good size of like an explosion of creativity and all sorts of new businesses and opportunities for people online that they wouldn't have made it on on broadcast TV or radio, uh, or or just didn't want to make it there. Um, and the, the downsides of that, right, is is what the the book addresses. The company dealt with um, all these content moderation problems, the like the creator economy, the the like. Balancing the interests of their advertisers and their millions of creators, um, and all sorts of unintended consequences from their system that they're still dealing with. So I think, um, you know, in, in many ways, the book is just a, a, a call for people to pay much more atten- attention and scrutinize this as important company and platform. Right. So now, look, I always state my bias uh, to the audience as much as I can, and so uh, we're one of YouTube's original partners. Uh, and uh, it's a big and important partner for us. But I've also had a lot of experience about the upsides and downsides, as Mark knows. We've talked off air. Um, so, but Mark, in, in my experience, having said that, um, I think mainstream media has two issues with YouTube. Um, one, I, I think they view them as competitors, and and that's led to a number of things that are interesting, which I want to get to next. But but the other one is that I think that a lot of people in or almost all people in mainstream media for a long time, if they're not physically old, they had a very old mentality. And so they looked at YouTube as like, oh YouTube <laughs> cat videos, please. And so that that was at least a decade. That's my sense of it. But I still think that old media doesn't get it at all. I think that they still think it's largely cat videos and for kids and that it isn't a real giant in the media business, which is in my view insanity. But that's that's from my outsider and a little bit insider point of view. Having researched it as much as you did, what's your sense of, of whether that's true? Yeah, I think that's right. And I'll put I'll put myself in the in the mainstream media and being culpable here. But you know, I, I mean, even on this book tour, I still get asked questions like, oh, there are YouTubers that play video games and people, millions of people watch, and they have you know millions of careers, right? Millions of dollar career like that. That has been happening now for a decade. Uh, you know, it's interesting that a lot of these like YouTuber YouTube studios that started about a decade ago, their goal was to we want you know when some when a YouTube star goes on late night TV, it's like treat them like George Clooney, right? Like you, you you don't ask George Clooney or Brad Pitt how much money they make. Um, I, there there is like a lot of rubbernecking at that, and, and perhaps it's a little bit of of competition. I think it's you know it's a it's an unregulated industry, and largely especially compared to, to broadcast television. Um, and and I think you know what some of the key moments and controversies in, in the company's past is is become in part it was such a they built this. This system, this miraculous system for uh, online advertising that shared money with millions of creators with like very few safeguards in place. And so I think part of the confusion was a lot of people didn't understand how YouTube worked. And we saw that five years ago when they had uh, what's popularly known as like the ad apocalypse, right? All their advertisers flee and, and then they have these major consequences for, for creators on the platform, in part because, you know, Advertisers who are YouTube's main customers didn't understand how their business worked, um, and I think part of that fault certainly lies with with the mainstream media, but but a lot of it lies with with YouTube itself. Yeah, well, uh, the part that lies with YouTube, I, I've talked to them, and and you know, in my limited capacity as a partner, uh, to you know, on those fronts, and sure, they've got to get better on a lot of stuff, but but uh, you know. 
back to mainstream media though. Like, so right now, I think that if you went to Washington or New York and talked to reporters and uh, told them that Mr. Beast is one of the most famous people on the planet, um, they, blank stares. Yeah, right. I mean, I, that's what I'm asking. I, I'm not seeing it wrong, right? They have no earthly idea who Mr. Beast is, even though he's a thousand times more famous than anyone, or almost anyone they know. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right, and and a lot of that is just the way it's used, and even like, you know, I, I'm in, in my generation, right, like mid 30s, like I, I came up, YouTube wasn't was invented when I was in college, but like, it's still you're, if you're not part of the culture, um, and and most of people my age and older use YouTube as a utility. Um, I think you know, so a lot of people depend on it for news, for culture, for entertainment, and there are a lot of these cult, uh, like subcultures that, and niches that that people don't. A lot of people don't understand. I think that's that's one of the, the main reasons, and it's been neglected by the press in part because it's there's not a lot of financial data about YouTube out there. It's in some ways sort of you know it was an interesting story a decade ago when it was like rivaling Hollywood and now everyone's sort of obsessed with TikTok. Um, but but creators like Mr. Beast are, I think, should be um, you know, treated sort of like Game of Thrones, right? It's, the audience is that big um and and deserves that much uh attention. And and so yeah, I, I totally think you're right. I mean, like the we've we failed in the mainstream media to treat YouTube with the with the respect and reverence and attention it deserves. Yeah. Um it's it's indisputably true. I mean, if you don't know Mr. Beast, it's probably because you watch mainstream media, and it's okay. Uh, like, it's not your job to know it if you're just a regular person, right? Uh, but I mean, like, sorry, like a lot of people, the history of the company too is like people inside YouTube, uh, they were like not familiar with the platform traditionally, and they were always their their goal for their business team was let's get traditional media, let's get um, the big studios onto YouTube. Like, I know, they, I know a brother. They were endlessly <laughs> obsessed with it. Totally. I'm like I, I honestly in one meeting I I told uh, executives as much as I had access to them and it was probably pro- just that one meeting. Um, I I said you guys have all these Ferraris in your garage and you never take them out. You keep looking for other cars. Like oh what what does my 80 year old grandfather think is famous? Okay, I'm gonna go for that car. The Ferraris right there. I mean to give you a sense of. Mr. Beast, I'm using him just as an example, but the guy has over 100 million subscribers. If you had the equivalent of that in old media, you would have Ricky Martin times 10 at his height, right? And and no one, no one in traditional media treats him that way. Yeah, I mean, Mr. Beast has also had like a pretty unblemished record. Like so far, he hasn't brought the platform into any controversy. But you know, like their prior stars have, you know, like PewDiePie. Okay, let's talk Logan about that. Paul. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So sorry to cut you off there, but it's an important point in the book too. So, um, so those stars create controversies. I've always thought, so what? And so I don't want to be too flippant about it, but yeah, I mean, have you seen the guys on TV? They're a hot mess. So, I mean, and Roseanne Barr created huge controversies for ABC. But it feels like again, here we go again. Mainstream media doesn't like YouTube, so they're like, you can you believe what PewDiePie did? As if it was like. The only person who's ever created controversy in media. Yeah, I mean, fair. How I mean, you've never seen like PewDiePie go on stage with Susan Wojcicki. Like, it's not. It's just not the way that the business is operated. There's not the sense that like they've stood by their biggest stars, uh, and and then that's when they can kind of be like, we're hands off, we're a platform, right? And and clearly, like they want to promote their stars for their their advertising, big events and conferences. I mean, I think they should be treated like a media company in many ways, right? And like, and they have to, they especially when stars are that influential with young audiences and their advertisers uh, and like regulators are starting to pay more attention to them. Like, I I, I think that that sh- in like should entice the company to respond and actually like um, treat these. You know, they call it the YouTube partner program, right? Like you're a business partner with them. You're sharing revenue. Uh, and so I think in that way is the company is like is the you know they're not programming determining what goes up on YouTube obviously, but they are responsible as a media programmer in part because it's the way their business is structured. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, look, of all the we've had plenty of issues on YouTube behind the scenes, etc. Right, and they're not anywhere near perfect. But um, 
mainstream media platforms, guys who want to start wars and get millions of people killed and work for defense contractors and don't even tell you. So don't talk like you're worried about PewDiePie. I mean, we're worried about Logan Paul. I mean, those guys are. And so my point there, Mark, is they're looking for the mohill to make a giant mountain out of because I think it's a war for advertisers. And what they're trying to do, the CNNs and the New York Times of the world, is smear online media badly enough that advertisers keep going to New York Times and CNN instead of YouTube and Facebook. So that's my theory. What do you think? I think, I mean, yes, look, YouTube's business model is take money from convinced TV advertisers that their money's being wasted on television and that the audience is on YouTube and that their spend uh, is disproportionate. Um, you know, I think that, like, as the history of the YouTube shows, that's that's a rocky uh, path so far that always hasn't hasn't been smooth. They've made a lot of progress now, and like, there's still this trend where where money is moving over. Um, I mean, I guess you know, like, there, there's a fine line between you know they will point to a lot of the papers, the Murdoch, Rupert Murdoch owned papers, as as leading some of this reporting. Like at the same time, like it is a, it's a pretty opaque platform. We don't know like what decisions they're making and how, and often like we, you know, how many people in the street know like who the CEO of YouTube is in general. So I do think like any scrutiny of platform is not rooted necessarily in in jealousy or business priorities, and more just like trying to shed some light on this really powerful company. Yeah, I think it's totally mixed. Uh, I think that there's super legitimate critique. That, that you and others are engaging in on, in good, healthy journalism. And, and, and I think that I've seen pieces, whether it was a Murdoch piece, and I saw one on CNN, where it was an obvious hatchet job. And, and, it, and then CNN sent their advertise, uh, like memos to their advertisers right afterwards. It, it's, so I, I think mainstream media, you could write a thousand books like this about. But okay, one last question, Mark. Sure. Um, so, of the different platforms, is you in your reporting, like you get a sense that YouTube is more even-handed, more fair. I know these are really broad generalizations than the other platforms like Facebook and other and TikTok, etc., or less fair. I, I mean, I think in, in like it is different in the fact that unlike any other, like Facebook and Twitter, the decisions that YouTube makes like affects people's livelihoods. Like there are millions of people making money from YouTube, and many of them building careers on the platform. And so that like when they set their content filters or they change their policy, it doesn't just you know, de-platform people, but it actually like demonetizes, right? It removes income from people, and that's like a, I think it's just a whole different layer um, of its significance. And and now we're seeing like TikTok and Instagram, Spotify, like all the platforms are trying to chase this the same model because it it is like a very savvy model, like and it, and it works for YouTube and it's invented all sorts of new businesses. So I think in that sense, like they YouTube moves a lot slower. In part because they just have a lot bigger ripple effects whenever they they make any changes. Yeah, that's true, and I agree. I think that they do have to move slower because if it it, it affects so many. If you use the analogy of a tanker and, and moving a tanker, and that's exactly right. And if if I'm the captain of a speedboat, I want to move quick. If I'm the captain of a tanker, I don't want to move that quick. You're going to shake a lot of inventory off the boat. Okay, so that's one way of putting it, but. Look, guys, everybody check out, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, Mark, it's a really interesting book, and it's a necessary book, uh, and it's a good and important conversation. Um, you know, and, and I want people to understand my point of view is I'm not saying that YouTube don't, doesn't do things wrong. It definitely does, right? But my point is that mainstream media those, does those things wrong times 10, 20, 100, and then they throw rocks as if they're, you know, perfectly clean, which they are not. So, that's my perspective. I mean, YouTube gives a lot of views to mainstream media right now. You know, Fox and CNN are doing pretty well on the platform. So, yeah, uh, but uh, but here we are still uh, in this day and age. And I think that there's some chance that until like the last network signs off the air, they'll still be like, "Our oh, YouTube's no big deal, no big deal," uh, and then they'll be off, and the only thing left will be you. Just ask your kids. I mean, we've been saying this for 15 years. Just ask your kids. 
And uh, and every time they're like, really? Yeah, they do just watch YouTube, isn't it? Um, <laughs> they're not watching 60 Minutes? Huh. Um, all right, anyways, uh, Mark, thank you again, brother. Yeah, thanks for having me, it was fun.